Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Road Reflections. Doing the car again. Uh, I'm going to be doing a couple of these. Uh, I'm going to try them out for the weekdays. Because I've got a, a drive on Mondays and Tuesdays. So uh, I might record a couple like with one topic in mind. Uh, they'll probably be more like idea-based or, or shorter ones. Because they're going to be based on you know, more of the news story type stuff uh, than they are, like, multiple different stories and stuff like that. So that's what I'm going to try to do with these. Uh, as usual, if you if you like this sort of stuff, make sure you share it, make sure you like it, make sure you're subscribed to my channel uh, because, uh, yeah, that stuff is, uh, stuff is important. So uh, that's, that's going to be the, the ongoing plan with these uh, for now. So uh, the thing I wanted to talk about today that kind of popped up on on my feed and I've been watching a a couple commercials uh, because I I have a side gig where I work with this uh, elderly lady and you know we we watch she watches the news she watches the evening news so there's there's a lot of political commercials that come out Uh, but the primary one was uh, that Apparently, Joe Biden has uh, plagiarized yet again, yet again. Joe Biden has plagiarized a portion of his speech with a deceased Canadian prime minister. So I read the article, and I guess it's the ending of his acceptance speech was uh, almost exactly like this Canadian prime minister uh, that passed away. Uh, He he, he made a speech while he was, you know, uh, dying, essentially. And, you know, it's about, like, being a light in the darkness or whatever. And, first of all, this ain't the first time. This ain't the first time. Uh, A couple months ago, maybe in May or something, I I released a video uh, from my uh, live virtual comedy shows that I've been doing uh, about how Trump plagiarizes and how he's lied about his uh, educational record. So he has has a long-standing... pattern of uh of this sort of stuff right so it's it's not shocking it's just like it's your acceptance speech and you have speech writers like these politicians can hire speech writers so why wouldn't why wouldn't you just have them write something more original and part of it sure i it could be that the speech writers are the ones that possibly plagiarize this thing but if you get caught why wouldn't you just be like hey i made a mistake and, uh, you know, I shouldn't have done that, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and kind of own up to it a little bit, but that's not, that's not Joe Biden's speed. He, he, he ain't never going to do that. He's been, he's been called out on his record several different times. He's been called out on, on gaffes that he's made in the last couple months alone, several different times. And he doesn't, you know, own up to that sort of stuff. Uh, like, I know, I, I know I've talked about this before on the channel when, when he said, uh, if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. That, that fucking gaffe that he did on The Breakfast Club. And I, and I you know, ran through that interview with you guys uh, w- w- when I was doing a lot more live streams and stuff. And, you know, his excuse for that was, I was just making a joke. It was just jokes. Like, I make these jokes with my friends, which is essentially like, his version of, it's just locker room talk, you guys. It's just racist locker room talk. It shouldn't count. And it's like, it absolutely does. So he doesn't, he doesn't own up to it. The first one, um, the one that I talked about in the video, and I, if you want to, you can go check out that video too, because I do a little bit more in-depth in, like, how he essentially got caught plagiarizing. There's, there's video clips that I use that are like actual news clips. They're not, they're not shit that I like pulled out of thin air, right? They're actual news clips that I use and comment off of, uh, is he used Neil Kinnock, this, uh, labor party leader, Neil Kinnock. He used his speech and he plagiarizes it. And then he took aspects of Neil Kinnock's own life and like made it his own thing which is like fucking crazy to me that he did that and then when he got caught and they and you know like it hit the airwaves and all the all the news channels were talking about it cuz 
plagiarism is a big deal, right? Like, you shouldn't plagiarize, especially when, especially when the Democrats criticize Trump for lying, and he does. He lies a shit ton. That's sort of like his thing is he likes to, he likes to lie. Um, at, you know, when, when they criticize him for that, but they can't criticize Joe Biden for straight up just ignoring his record and, and just lying about the fact that he, like, plagiarized somebody. Uh, he got he got shitty with the media, and he was you know I think one of the phrases that he said was like it was the one time that I didn't it was the one time that I didn't say uh, that it was Neil Kinnock's speech you know I, I shouldn't be and then you know you see like it's just it, he 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 plagiarized Bobby Kennedy uh, where Bobby Kennedy was talking about Medicare for all he plagiarized that speech uh, and again didn't own up to it he just kind of passed it on, right? Like, he was just like, whatever, so what? I did that. Fucking deal with it. So, the the Biden team, because the, the, the DNC and, and the Democratic uh, Party itself is a little smarter, and they're not letting him make statements about this, because he'd go back out, and he would do the same thing, right? He'd be like, oh, whatever, who gives a shit? Eat my ass. Like, he'd, you know, and then, and then he would say something weird about black people, uh, they haven't made a comment about it. And I've, uh, you know, I, I've seen, I, I've seen this happen a lot with, with, uh, staunch democratic voters, right, is they'll come out and they will, uh, they'll just be like, it's whatever, who cares? It's not important. We just need to get Trump out. We just got to get him out. That's the whole thing. We'll, you know, we'll substitute one liar for another liar. But as long as it's not this particular liar, it'll be fine. And it's like, no, I think the problem is that we keep electing fucking liars and plagiarists and excusing their behavior. So they just get to keep doing it over and over again because the standard is so low. The bar is set so low. Like, the bar is, like, don't be like Trump. That's the... No, it should be way higher for a politician. And, you know, I hear people that are like, well, I think RGB needs to retire, and we need, like, a better Supreme Court judge. We need, like, a liberal Supreme Court judge. And that's all fine, but, like, liberal Supreme Court judges don't... um, don't adjudicate on progressive ideologies, you know? They, like... Like, the big ones that I've heard from people when it comes to Supreme Court is uh, Roe v. Wade, right? The abortion debate. And uh, guns. Like, that's the one that they talk about the most. They're like, it's either, it's either the gun debate or it's the abortion debate. It's one of the two. And we need a liberal judge in there so that they don't overturn, overturn this shit. And... My argument to that is one, uh, you know, the, the, the Roe v. Wade argument is, is a privacy argument and it's primarily, uh, states rights. Like on a federal level, they can't ban abortion, but whatever the states want to do is sort of how they want to handle it. That's sort of the way that it's dictated. And we saw that stuff happen like last year over the summer around this time, right? We saw how many states, how many states put these archaic ridiculous abortion laws in place, right? It's like, like you saw like, uh, what was it? Georgia, Tennessee, Kentucky, Kansas, Missouri. Uh, I'm probably missing a, a, a couple on that one. So even if you do get liberal judges, it doesn't seem like you're really preventing archaic, uh, pro-life legislation to be put into place. There's a lot of hypocrisy that, that the Supreme Court doesn't get rid of, right? On a federal level, yes, they can, they can absolutely, you can make the case that you can't ban abortions. That is a violation of human rights. It, that, that, that it's up to the woman uh, as far as like what she would like to do with her body. Planned Parenthood isn't like an abortion clinic. It, it provides a lot of different health services for uh, women's health and men's health as well. So it is, it is a very necessary uh, institution in our country, a, a very necessary, especially for women's health rights, it is a necessary institution. So, uh, you know, I, I, 
I don't I don't know if that's going to be it. Plus, you had someone like Merrick Garland, right? Merrick Garland was the the gentleman that uh, Obama wanted to put uh, uh, put onto the courts. Uh, what what is it? I don't remember the word for it now. Um, ele- it's not electing a point. That's why did I, I how did I forget the word fucking a point? Uh, but he but he wanted to appoint Merrick Garland, and I, I remember reading like he had like ninety some odd percent the same as Brett Kavanaugh is what he. Uh, you know, decided on. He decided in line 90 some odd percent with Brett Kavanaugh. So even when you get liberal judges, they're still, you know, voting in line with uh, conservative judges. Because because they're not really liberal judges. A lot of these people are like neoliberal judges. Uh, there's probably some exceptions, right? Uh, I'm not, uh, I, I, will, I will admit that I'm not hyper- um, educated on the, you know, details of every single thing that, uh, each of these judges has, uh, decided on. Uh, I know, um, J- Justice Cagle and uh, RGB have pretty much been relatively, uh, left on, on the way that they decide stuff. So I get it. But again, I think the bigger question remains is if that's what it is, if the decision is to vote for a pretty terrible Democratic candidate is because of the Supreme Court, why are we not voting for Supreme Court judges? Why is that not part of the election process, right? So like every four years, we rotate nine different judges out for the highest court in the land. Treat it like an election. Why are they appointed by the president? That puts so much more pressure, that puts so much more uh, authority on, on the executive branch that basically controls the judicial branch and all of these branches are supposed to be checks and balances to each other and you know when when it comes down to a president appointing a judge for a lifetime it's not a checks and balances so to me it's you should be arguing for uh judges should be elected by the people and you know that's that's and for four years that's what they do, and that's how it works. Besides, Citizens United was put under you know so-called liberal court. It's pretty much even, right? And that's one of the worst fucking decisions that they ever made. So and and in terms of guns, they've only had one case about it. And they didn't, they didn't do, adjudicate anything about guns till like the early 2000s. So I particularly don't buy into the whole like I'm voting for the Supreme Court thing as an excuse to vote for someone like Joe Biden. What about the vice presidency? Well, that's Kamala Harris, right? If Joe Biden just becomes unable to run the country, which is a... Is a a real possibility, by the way, is that he might not be well enough to run the country. Very real possibility, I think, we need to be aware of here. Uh, Kamala Harris taking over the White House is particularly not good. Now, I've had uh, a conversation. I, I just talked to a, a good friend of mine, Jay Jackson, very funny comedian, uh, Jay Jackson, and Jay pointed out he was like she has an opportunity right now till November she has an opportunity that if she is going to be the deciding factor for a lot of people to vote for Joe Biden then she has a lot of atoning to do and absolutely he's right and she does have that opportunity that opportunity is very much laid out in front of her to come out and do what Joe Biden does not do which is take uh, accountability for his record and his past legislations. But I don't think she will. Her donors are basically Hillary Clinton's. She is a, a party she is a party liner, a party toady all the way through. The Democratic Party, the DNC came out and said that they will not approve any sort of Medicare for all. You have Joe Biden who's basically the face of the party right now who is who said nothing will fundamentally change. He won't approve a Medicare for all. So, again, if the vice president is who you're voting for by voting for president, my argument then becomes, why aren't we voting for the vice presidential candidate? Instead of it being selected by 
the DNC, much like much like how Joe Biden was selected by the DNC too. There were there was definitely some uh, you know behind the scenes bullshittery that happened after Super Tuesday when you had all of the all of the candidates that were realistically doing way fucking better than Joe Biden just yielded their campaign and endorsed Joe Biden as the as the candidate. And if that was going to be the case anyway, you know, why not Why not just have them do that? Why did they have to go through all the rigmarole and the theatrics and all of the shit? You know, why did, Why couldn't Pete Buttigieg just come out uh, and, and be like, I think Joe Biden's the guy. Why couldn't Kamala Harris do that? Why, you know, but, but they had to put themselves in the, in the front, in the forefront, they, because uh, the Democratic Party really didn't have anybody to run at this point, and they had to, like, test the waters. They had to see... Who, who was going to be tolerable enough for the people? Weirdly enough, they chose Joe Biden. <laughs> I watch these political ads, right? Because evening news. And one of the attack ads is about Joe Biden and his record. There, there's a, 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 and again, this is in the video that I made. Uh, and I talk about it. it is he, he basically goes after a reporter... Uh, and is like, I'm smarter than you. I have all these degrees. I graduated at the top of my law school. I'm better than you. I'll fucking debate you any day of the week. You're, you're dumb. In all, like all this sh- it was just like this big, like chest thumping fucking thing. And now, you know, the Republicans have gotten a hold of that. Whatever fucking pack is running that commercial and they're using that against him by saying, yeah, it was also reported that when people investigated whether he, w- he graduated the top of his, his class with multiple degrees, that's not true. He graduated the bottom of his class with one degree. He was just being boastful for the sake of being boastful. So... You just pick the worst fucking candidate that you possibly could because, you know, now you're going to have middle America people. By the way, Joe Biden has voted in line with Republicans so many times. Like, he is a Republican. That's that's who Joe Biden is. If Joe Biden ran under the Republican ticket, he would be a perfect contender for Donald Trump under the Republican Party. He would be a perfect Republican contender. And then you could have had Kamala Harris be the nominee. Although after Tulsi Gabbard kind of took her down, I, I don't think that would have been a possibility. But, you know, maybe you could have put Pete Buttigieg. And not that I would vote for Pete or Kamala. Is Pete is basically a CIA asset. He is, a, he is just a younger, gayer Joe Biden. That's, that's what Pete Buttigieg is. But you could have had anybody else. And I bet they would have been able to hide... From at least mainstream people, the, the you know, not people that kind of hit the, like, touch the pulse of what's going on. They would have looked at someone like Pete Buttigieg and been like, he's gay and he plays classical music. He knows how to complete sentences without getting super racist. It's subtext racist. It's very subtle racism with Pete. But again, they didn't. They chose this guy that has a ton of skeletons in his closet. Joe Biden has run for president a bunch of different times, never won, always got caught stealing other people's speeches, boasting about his own academic records, voting for crime bills that fucked over black people, and then continues to say weird shit about black people all the time. So I watched some of the speech, right? I, I, I figure I, sh- I should, uh, it should only be fair that I check out the speech. It's 24 minutes. I got through maybe like 15 minutes of it or something. <clears throat> and again, it's no different than Obama's speech, right? There's a lot of platitudes. There's a lot of, uh, I'm better than Trump. Isn't Trump dumb? Like a lot of the Democratic Party's speeches have just kind of been like this subtle Trump roast like a political Trump roast instead of being about like, here's why you should vote for the, here's what we're going to do as Democrats. Here's, here's how we're going to steer the country in the right direction. And their little argument is we're going to steer the country in the right direction because we're not Donald Trump. And it's like, that's not, it's not anything. 
So, six minutes into the thing, he starts talking about Obama. And I was like, I'm impressed that it took him fucking six minutes to get into that shit. And then he comes out and he was like, I, I would do what I've been saying since March. I would do, you know, rapid testing where you go in, you get the test, and then you get your results immediately. And it's like, that's not how science works. For someone that boasts that he's a big science guy, that he's going to trust science, it's like, that's not how science fucking works. You don't just take a test and immediately know. Uh, you know, there there is a process that you have to go through. So... Yeah, even even one hundred percent. You should we should have done far more testing. It should have been uh, a- absolutely accessible to everybody. We shouldn't have charged anybody for the tests, especially people that have insurance. But really, this is about the most vulnerable in our community. And again, if you don't believe in something like Medicare for all, if you don't believe that everybody deserves uh, health care then how can you how are you going to come out and be like yeah but everybody deserves rapid testing well that's a that's a slippery slope because then the next thing is wait if everybody deserves rapid testing what about the uninsured they're going to get testing too well if they can get the testing why can't they get the health care why can't they why can't they get the right to be a healthy citizen If you're, if you're all about abortion rights, like if you're a pro-choice individual, then you should be for Medicare for all. So again, if, if this is about the Supreme Court and abortion is one of the reasons why it's about the Supreme Court and that's going to be your reason to vote for Joe Biden and if Joe Biden is not for the right and the choice of doing what you want with your body but still having the right to be a healthy person, going to see a doctor, getting medication that you need without being in debt, how can you claim that you're really pro-choice? I don't think you can. I think that's a hypocritical, uh, hypocritical, hypocritical viewpoint, in my opinion. But that's the whole speech, though. The whole speech is a bunch of hypocrisies. You know, he makes this big claim that if we, if we want the economy to be on track, then we need to control the virus. And it's like, yeah. But that means that you have to take care of the people in your country and you don't have a record of doing that. And you're not saying that. Anytime somebody comes up and goes, this is a way to help the people, you go, no, we're never going to do something like that. Nothing's fundamentally going to change and that's too much of a change. He talks about like Europe and New Zealand and, and all these other countries that that have contained this thing, that, that aren't seeing the numbers that America is seeing. And what he fails to talk about is the fact that these countries implemented a universal basic income. These countries implemented a universal health care. They implemented better mask procedures. They have a different culture. They're not run by hubris and nationalism. But you won't approve any of those things. So how can you make the claim that you want to do what Europe is doing and then you find out what Europe is doing and you go, yeah, but, but no. That doesn't make any fucking sense. And the whole party has done that. Pelosi's done it. Schumer's done it. Pelosi won't say universal basic income. She can't even put the, 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 that string of words together. It's hypocritical. And for saying that about the Democratic Party, people like me become villains to, to, to staunch Democrats, to these liberals, right? They become these villains to them, and which is ridiculous, I think. And it's not like I'm, again, the, the, this notion of the binary, right? Like it, it's one or the other has kind of corrupted the nature of discourse and critical thinking in America because apparently if you say anything about the Democratic Party. It means that you're a pro-Trump, Republican, rah, 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 give me my guns kind of person, which is bullshit. Because I'm not for that guy either. So, I would say that even if you are a staunch Democrat, if you are a strong liberal, you should hold these people's feet to the fire. You should come out and look at them 
and say, if you want to do what Europe is doing, then a universal basic income, something that outsiders like Tulsi Gabbard, Bernie Sanders, Andrew Yang have all suggested to do since March, then you need to do that. You need to put a, a cancellation on rent and debt mortgage and rents you need to look at at what's going on with with people in this country that are going to be kicked out of their homes it's not about jobs jobs doing what there's a lot of jobs that can't be done right now because of the virus and then if there wasn't a virus there could, there was a lot of jobs that couldn't be done because of automation Calling out the hypocrisies of, of the Democratic Party is not a bad thing. The Republicans are not going to do this stuff. They, they are not a party of progress. They are a party of traditionalism and keeping things the way that they were, you know, from fucking 1910. So, you know, it's, it's important to challenge your party. It's important to challenge the people that are supposed to represent you in a representative democracy, right? But I don't see staunch Democrats doing that. And you, and you have excuses to things like plagiarism and lies. But, but here's the thing. When Melania did it, everybody freaked the fuck out. But when Joe Biden does it, who cares? It's Canadian. He was a Canadian and he's dead. No one gives a shit. That's the way that they... America's the best. It was probably better when Joe Biden said it. Neil Kinnock, who gives... Yeah, so what? So what he fucking took somebody else's life and made it his own? When it comes to the Democratic Party, there's a lot of nationalism that, that comes out of, uh, of the members of that party. That's something that I have noticed uh, quite a bit of. It's just, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know, um, you know, to, to kind of start wrapping this thing up a little bit is, I don't, I don't know what it's going to take for and 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 you know the answer might be that uh there is nothing you can do there is nothing that's going to change these people's mind uh they're so guided by fear um and uh kind of willful ignorance because here's the thing is like i ask democrats i'm like hey here's all the things that i'm not voting for joe biden for here's all the things that i'm definitely not going to vote for trump for can you give me a reason to vote for either of these candidates right and the, the Republicans that I asked that question about Trump will give me some policies and shit that, that they like. Not that it's going to get done, right? Like, like the, the, the shit that he's going to do is, like, continue the privatization of the post office, which is going to be the, the thing that I'm going to talk about in my live show this weekend on Friday, and which has been going on for a very long time, you know. He will uh, bust up unions, Again, something that's go so so Trump is kind of just rehashing uh, and bringing to the light and bringing to the forefront um, things that we forgot the the uh, uh, you know the, the 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 system was doing anyway. Uh, he's worsening climate change. Yeah, so did the Democrats. Like, okay, so but the Republicans can at least give me something. When I ask the Democrats, I'm like, hey, I I invite you to give me a reason to vote for this guy. And I was like, there are plenty of videos that you can watch to get my perspective, to, to get my point of view, and, and I hope that you do watch them. And I encourage them to watch and discuss it with me. I, I'm, I'm open to that. But, you know, I, I talked about this with Bill Ottman of Minds.com on my podcast. Is like Facebook doesn't really encourage or reward um, genuine discourse. It, it rewards uh, argumentative behavior and, um, you know, uh, negative behavior patterns. That's what it, it rewards. So um, I don't, I you know, Facebook is really not, I, I keep trying and I really should stop. Um, but, I, but I had this today where somebody was like, I, I'm voting for your right to exist and I, my 
parents fought for this country and da da da. And it's like, that's cool, man. I'm doing the same thing. I'm fighting for your rights to exist too. I just don't believe that this duopoly is going to do it. I think it's a systemic problem and it's a matter of perspective. You know, the perspective is, and I talked to Jay Jackson about this, the perspective is uh, Trump, got to get Trump out. Um, or the system needs to change. And my response is, why can't it be both? Why does it have to be exclusive? Uh, because it doesn't, right? And and when I go and I, and I talk, I basically said to this person, hey, give me, a, give me your reason to vote for Joe Biden because I have a lot of reasons that I've articulated several times about why I can't vote for this guy. Other than Trump, give me a reason for it. And he goes, I don't have to convince you of shit. All right. I'm just I'm going to vote so that you can vote for whoever you want. Okay. Me too, man. I'm also doing that. I just don't believe that voting for these two parties is going to result in that. And here's the thing, right? When has your right to vote with a Democrat or a Republican in office been taken away. Because that's what the other side believes. The other side believes that if the Democrats are put into place, then their beliefs are gone and their rights are going to be stomped out and so on and so forth, right? This, that, and the third. And and the Democrats believe the same thing is going to happen. So it's all guided by fear instead of looking at <clears throat> the candidate for who they are and being honest, being honest about who they are. Um, And if you are guided by fear, I think the honest thing to do is to say, I'm scared and um, I'll vote for anybody but this person that I'm scared of. I don't have a good reason for you to do the same thing if you are not guided by your fear. That's a response I can understand. But they don't. Because it's a binary country. I'm not saying everybody, but I'm saying the the people that do, uh, you know, buy into that belief system. They, they they it's one or the other. And if you don't believe the same thing as them, you're the enemy. Even though, watch ten minutes of my stuff, and you will find out what side I'm on. The excuses that they make for Joe Biden is is a clear example of. You know, you're you're voting out of fear. You're not making a decision for somebody. It's it's against somebody, and um, that's not going to help us. Anyway, uh, that's uh, that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you guys for tuning in and listening and hanging out. Uh, like I said at the top, if you enjoy this stuff, make sure you hit the like. Make sure you share this out uh, for more content like this. Subscribe to. My channel, wherever you're watching it, if you're watching it on YouTube or Facebook or my Rockfin channel, uh, and if you're tired of YouTube and uh, Facebook uh, and their bullshit and their censorship and all that kind of crap, uh, go to my Rockfin page. Uh, it's ad-free. It's a blockchain cryptocurrency site. There's no censorship. Um, you get to see the creators that you want to see. There's no uh, al- there's no like crazy algorithm control over it. Plus, they help uh, content creators earn money from their content. That's the big important thing that the, that, uh, uh, the Rockfin channels will get you. And, uh, yeah. And for everything else, for my, uh, live shows, the live virtual stand-up comedy shows that I do pretty much every single Friday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific called the Citizen Revolution. Uh, go to my website, which is krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A dot com. You can check out my album there. You can check out my show dates there. You can check out past episodes of this show. It's the one-stop shop for all things Krish Mohan. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's all I got for you guys. Like I said, I'm going to try to do a couple more uh, of these throughout the week. They'll be kind of shorter. They'll be a little bit looser. Uh, we're going to be talking about one story or one idea um, and uh, and kind of explore that rather than do two or three stories and and make a much longer video with uh, with you know clips and all that kind of shit. Uh, so if you guys like this format, let me know and I'll keep doing it as long as I can keep doing it. Um, and I am trying to figure out when to bring live streams back. It's been particularly busy, but I will have uh, a little bit a uh, little bit more control over my schedule uh, in the coming weeks. So I want to try to do an, a, a Rockfin exclusive live stream and a Facebook live stream as well. Uh, so uh, 
uh, yeah, stay, stay tuned for that. And thank you so much.